want you to think about the most random thing that you're passionate about. I think mine might be mathematics. <laughs> and that somehow led me into a career of photography. I remember sitting here in this very auditorium years ago, absolutely mortified. It was the end of the year, and awards were being given out. The most valuable on the soccer team, the captain of the cheerleading squad, these athletes stood up, put their shoulders back, walked to this stage as the crowd cheered. <laughs> they had all this pride and excitement. And then they announced, the next award goes to the most spirited varsity math team member. <laughs> and then they announced it, Christy Odom. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you back then, the applause did die down. These are high schoolers. <laughs> the applause died down. People actually started laughing. And I was mortified. And I remember thinking the only way I can make this moment end is by getting out of that seat, walking down onto this stage and getting that award. I did so, not with pride, but I had my shoulders forward. I didn't give anyone contact any eye contact. I ran up here, got my award, and then ran off. All right, so I may never have been an athlete, but I was a mathlete. <laughs> I remember going to the principal here and saying, can I double up on my math classes? Because who needs an art? I was denied saying, you need to become well-rounded, and we're going to do that. You have to take an art. And I'm going, no, please, this is the wrong decision. I let them know that that was a bad decision because I wanted to be an engineer, like my father and like my grandfather. I grew up quite close to my grandfather, and through his photographs, I started to see what he was most passionate about in his life. I started to see that he loved to travel. He loved being on the ocean. He loved his family, my family. <laughs> and when I, was, when I was 15, my grandfather passed away. He left me two things. He left me his Georgia Tech class ring, and he left me his camera. The class ring made total sense to me. I applied to Georgia Tech, and I got in with a full scholarship to electrical engineering. I was going to be an engineer just like him. Little did I know, though, that it wasn't the, it wasn't the ring. It was the camera that was going to lead my future. You see, I was a bit shy and introverted, and when I got to that college campus, I was so nervous and anxious. But the camera, all of a sudden, in my shyness, it gave me a voice. And it let me have these opportunities where I was on the field of football games, I was at the foot of stage during concerts, I was at the center of parties, and whenever I got nervous, I had that camera I could hide behind. That passion grew stronger and stronger. And then I remember the moment that changed my life. One of my favorite photos ever, which I'm excited to share with you guys, is this awful and horrible blurry shot. <laughs> but this was a pivotal moment in my career. You see, it was the day before my 21st birthday, and I was asked to photograph you two on their elevation tour. Right? I'm down there in the pit. Bono's up on stage singing, it's a beautiful day, don't let it get away. And then with the 20,596 people in the audience, he sees me. He sees me, and he starts walking towards me, and he starts singing into my camera lower and lower. He was well within my lens, my, my, the focal range of my lens. So I could not get a sharp shot because he was too close to me. So in my excitement and my shaking hands, I somehow turned the autofocus off that lens, and I got this blurry shot of Bono's eyeball. <laughs> And I'll tell you this, it was really hard to go to digital signal processing class the next day. <laughs> After three years of engineering, I left my degree, moved to Australia to get a degree in the fine arts. And I was thinking, how hard could this be after engineering? <laughs> I remember going into my degree, and I had no idea how to think creatively. I only knew how to think technically. I actually almost failed out of fine arts. I had to take drawing twice. <laughs> because I was failing. It was quite embarrassing. I remember the very first time, though, that art started making sense to me. 
It's when my teacher started talking about lines and how we could use lines in composition to move somebody's eyes from one part of the image to the other, like the mother orangutan hand in the babies. And then I started hearing about shapes, right? I love geometry, so I was like, yay, shapes! And how we could use circles to spiral somebody's eyes in. Now, the thing about fine arts is <clears throat> a lot of it is about how we feel. And so I took it one step further, and I started studying how shapes make people feel. Because circles have this earthy feel. And you know, think of the roundness of, of the earth, of the sun, of a pregnant belly. And so if I wanted somebody to feel that in my images, I could start using those shapes in my work. There are power shapes like squares and diamonds. If I wanted somebody to feel a little bit of power, I could start using those shapes to make my audience feel. And here's where I really got to nerd out. My favorite of the mathematical sequences, yes, I have a favorite mathematical sequence, <laughs> is and has always been the Fibonacci sequence. My teacher once in my fine arts school said, Fibonacci is found all throughout art. And I'm going, yes, this is a language I can speak. <laughs> so the Fibonacci sequence is where every number equals the two numbers before added together. So two is one plus one. So one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Three plus, three plus five is eight, and so on. You take these numbers, and you make squares with those being the sides, and you draw an arch through it, and you get what's called the Fibonacci spiral. The Fibonacci spiral is all throughout nature. It's in seashells, it's in cosmos, it's in how leaves grow up, uh, up stems and trees. And it is found also in art. Once I started learning about this and how the masters used it, I started seeing it. I started seeing it in the Mona Lisa from the way that your eyes go from the hands of the Mona Lisa and spiraled into the eyes. You see it in Starry Night and all these masters of painting. And I started to realize, yes, art's now making sense. I can use the Fibonacci spir spiral in my own work to draw people in tighter and tighter into the frame. A realization of correlation. As I grew older, my love for the planet got stronger and stronger. And I started using these methods to pull people's eyes into what I become most passionate about, which is wildlife. I wanted people to go inside and really see the eye of the orangutan. Now, another part about photography and fine art is really putting yourself into your work. And me celebrating my love for the arts and my love for mathematics, I let myself nerd out. This is one of my favorite shots that I took. And I remember when I was diving with the whale sharks, I wasn't getting the shots I wanted. But when I got to the surface of the water, I started to notice that light diffracted around my body. Diffraction. Diffraction is when an obstacle causes light to bend. And that's exactly what I was doing when I was snorkeling. And I wanted to really capture something that showed the spots and the pattern of the whale sharks. But then when I saw the lines in my shadow, I swam and I swam and I swam because I wanted those lines to meet up with the spots. And I really like the final image. <laughs> I remember moving from this to looking in my own backyard for patterns. I was looking for ways to marvel at nature close to home, which led me to photographing the patterns on butterflies and the patterns on the backs of dragonflies. Once again, look at all the geometric patterns. Ability for me to connect my love for mathematics with my love for art. Me doing a whole bunch of insect photography led to my very first article that got published online for National Geographic. It was on the declining insect population and the amazing citizen scientists that go out to count insects and have been doing so for almost 30 years. And in it, and in everything I do, is my love for shapes, my love for mathematics. Which led me to another story, all about the amazing Pika Patrol, which is a group of 437 people that go to 12,000 feet and above to count a little potato-sized mammal that's got Mickey Mouse ears. How beautiful is it we live in a world where people will make sure that this species is protected? Because with rising temperatures, they have been disappearing from places like Zion National Park. And these amazing volunteers are spending their time and effort to make sure they do not disappear from the front range. 
But in it, in everything I do, there's the mathematics. <laughs> One thing that I've learned in life is that passion is contagious. The passion that we hear from other people, the passion that we learn. I remember when I went to school here, I remember the passion from my teachers. Mr. Ioannidis, his lips would curl as he talked about geometry. Dr. K and how when a, she solved a hard equation, she would throw her arms in the air and yell, oh my God. It was beautiful and it was contagious, not just in me, but the thousands of students that she taught. Passion lives on. I got an email about a month ago and I learned the news that Dr. K is no longer in this world. I have not seen her since I accepted an award from her on this stage years ago. But her love for math and her passion has lived on inside me for that many years. As I grow older, my passion for the planet gets stronger and stronger. I want people to understand that we share this world with so many intelligent and emotional and beautiful beings. And I hope that I'm spreading those seeds of passion just like I found in mathematics and in other people. This is a photo of my grandfather, the one that left me his camera. And I wish I could tell him that this tool he gave me was a tool where I was able to spread my love and my passion and hopefully it'll live on longer than me. I see him in every photo I take and I hopefully get to see him in everyone that gets moved in any way, shape or form from any of my photos. Before I leave this stage, I have one demon that I have to battle. I have one thing that I have to do, if that's all right with you guys. Negative, passion is always a positive, and I do have a memory that is the negative in my life that should have always been a passion. Here is my most spirited varsity math team award, and I'm excited to finally stand on this stage with pride and say, go mathematics, oh my God. Thank <laughs> you.